I'm gonna show you how I got from this to this to this in a few easy steps. Hi, welcome to Chisholm Prism. Today I'm gonna show you this software I use, Nomad Sculpt, which I use to make all of my 3D models on my iPad. And it's not as hard as those softwares you see that's more technical, like Blender. This is a quick and easy um, tutorial that I'll run through of how I made this cylinder pot. So as you can see, I have it pre-built, but I'm gonna start from scratch. So I'm gonna hide those layers and just bring in a new shape. To do this, you need to go to the plus button at the top and select add and the cylinder shape. From there, you'll notice that you have all these arrows and um, circles moving around, but remember, it's the Y, X, and the Z axis. And that's how you move it back and forth, up and down, take it in and out. Um, something that's notable that I use is the tiny circles that will bring in and expand the shape from the center. So it will always be in a center formation. This is important because we are gonna be using the symmetry tool, which is my favorite friend on this, um, software you press it at the very top it's a little triangle icon and that will allow you to have one shape and it will be direct copy from the other side so you can see in that layer panel that there are um there's a mirror row press the three dots and clone that and when you clone it there's now two cylinders on top of each other and i like to take that and use the snap tool which set to 90 degrees, thinking of 360 or of a circle. And you're gonna rotate that and it will snap into place as 90 degrees. And that, you're just gonna keep repeating. Remember cutting that in half. So you keep repeating, keep rotating, um, keep cloning, and that's gonna get you this repeated cylinder rotation that's even and symmetrical all the way around. Also a tip before I clone again, I do join the previous layers together just so that the, there's not so many stacked layers on top of each other, it just makes it easier. And from there you have pretty much the whole shape. Um, you can resize it up and down. The next step is we have to hollow out that inside. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add another cylinder. I'm gonna shrink it in using that smaller circle to make sure it compresses from the center. And once we have it where we want it, um, we're gonna go ahead and, and stretch it and pull it as desired. Then we need to hide that layer that we just added the new cylinder and select the other object that we have. We're gonna go to voxel and you're going to merge, voxel merge the object together. This will eliminate that inner portion of the object, leaving you with the, the shape that we're desiring for the pot. Then lastly, we're gonna need a bottom on this pot. So we're just gonna add one more cylinder. And with that cylinder, you're going to, again, compress it down. So it's a very thin disc shape and then you're gonna size it and place it at the very bottom of your object. And we're gonna make sure we want holes in this if we're gonna make a plant pot. So you're going to use the hole button at the top and create, just bring in the blue, the blue dot, the smallest, um, as far as you want it. And there we go, we have it. The object is now rendered. So the next step, we need to export this file to our computer. So you're gonna go up to the file, you're gonna scroll down to export, and you're gonna select STL file. If it's a very clean file with only one layer, you can um, just send it off or selected layer, um, and then send it over to your computer. 
Once in your computer, we do need to transfer it so it's readable for your 3D printer. So the software that I use is Ultramaker. Um, I do recommend it. It's very easy to use and it's free. Um, so definitely go to the website and you can download it to your computer. Once you have it downloaded, open it up. You're able to drag in your file that you saved over into the software and immediately it will render your design. And, and there's a lot of great options in this software. You can add supports, you can change the density of the inside of the object, you can change the size and scale, um, all that good stuff. But once you have it where you want it, you're gonna select slice and slicing is when it's gonna prepare your file. The file that I had in there was a hundred, it was a, 10,000 times the original size. So a file that big is going to take some time. 10 hours later. Bruh. And you can see it's it was loading for a while to find out that it 15 hours, 15 hours to print. The design that I used did take 15 hours, but you can also scale it down and I'll show you that the print time is much less than before. Two important tips I learned along the way is choose your filament wisely. This new one that I was testing out had wood fibers within it and it kept clogging up my machine, limiting me in the height that it would print at, so I created it in parts. And secondly, use supports. When I was designing new shapes, I wasn't using that and look what happened. It became a hot mess. On to my favorite part where I get to assemble and prepare all of these pots ready for a new plant home. And I actually created a bunch of different shapes. So this one is a very simple shape. This one also had trouble finishing to its full potential, but I used glue to assemble these. And then lastly, I had more of a stacked octagonal version and it comes apart in two. So like I mentioned, I used my hot glue gun and I just started putting together each layer to make sure that they are connected. From there, I'm going to take some sandpaper and just kind of smooth over some of the edges and the glue that was sticking out. To get an even smoother look, I used some polyfill and I just went across each pot and smoothed it over its surface. It does take a couple of hours to dry, but once it's dry, it just fills in the cracks, some of those grooves, um, and makes a really smooth surface. I was making a real mess by the end of this. <laughs> Then again, I'm going to take my sandpaper and go over after it's dried, just really smooth down the surface. Okay. 
Then I did decide to paint this, so I needed to prime it. It's important when painting over plastic to prime it because it will not stick if not primed. So I went ahead and did that, let it dry, got my paint, and I wanted this to be really colorful and fun, so I started off with red and practically the whole rainbow on each pot. I can definitely say I am obsessed with color. I love color and spaces. I think it's so vibrant and it brings so much life and energy. And I definitely wanted these pots to reflect that as well. After the paint dried, I went ahead and sprayed each pot with a clear matte coating just to make sure that the paint sticks, everything's secure. Okay, now that the pots are finally dry, we get to fill them and put a little plant inside. It's the most exciting part, so let's do that. Okay, so today I only have two plants that I want to repot into these. I've like neglected this these guys for a little bit like they need some more soil i'm gonna be a better plant mom this year so i'm gonna take care of them i'm gonna give them some new pots some new soil refreshen it up and make sure they're in a good spot with a lot of light because these are um succulents uh, this is an aloe vera but i think they like a lot of light i don't know we're gonna do some research we're gonna figure it out and we're gonna make sure that these babies are thriving thriving this year okay <laughs> So I think the pots turned out actually really cute. I'm excited. I realized with my other shapes that I had, like this one, or when I remake these, I'm gonna make sure to put a hole at the bottom for drainage um, for pots. So I might end up using those for like pencils or like other little decoration things in the house. For my first attempt, I would say like, I'm actually really satisfied with how they came out. More to come on the plant life in this apartment. In the meantime, I'm gonna perfect these designs and make even more because I love making them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video explaining how I made these 3D pots from my printer and I'm excited to make more in the future. If you guys enjoyed, um, write in the comments down below like what was your favorite pot out of all of them and if you have any 3d printing tips or anything like that I would let's start a conversation down below i love what you guys contribute to these videos so thank you so much for watching and i hope you have an amazing day bye